All right, this is a, just a quick uh, V5 blocks uh, getting kind of getting started video. Uh, I'm including this with my VEX IQ blocks because uh, all of the same principles, it's, it's, they're all the same, okay? So um, what I'm going to do is, first of all, just show you that I have uh, VEX code V5 blocks open. And I just have a very simple program set up where I'm going to turn right for 90 and then turn left for 90 degrees. In order to do this, we need to tell the robot a little bit about itself. So I'm going to click Devices in the upper right. I already have my controller uh, set up, and uh, I've already got it plugged in, actually. Uh, so the, the good thing about that is now I can control it wirelessly. So I have, oops. <laughs> so I have, uh, let me see here. I've got it set up right here. Uh, you can see there's nothing plugged in. That's because the controller is plugged into the computer and the controller is already linked to the robot. Uh, so it makes things a little bit easier. Uh, that's uh, something I can go through a little bit later. But right now, I just want to go over the basics of setting this up. So I'm going to click Add Device and then a two-motor drivetrain. Like I said, I've already set up my controller, and all I did was click Controller and then click Done. That's all I had to do. All right, so I don't want to set that up, so I'll click Cancel. And so Add Device drivetrain to motor. Now in my particular little tiny you know testing robot I have the left motor left motor plugged into 20 and the right motor is plugged into 10 oh, 11 and then I have an inertial sensor and so I'm going to demonstrate that first. Uh, the inertial sensor for what we're doing the a gyro or inertial sensor is going to work exactly the same for what we're doing, okay? And I have that inertial sensor plugged into 10. Now, my wheels are tiny wheels, and you could just check, um, you could just look at uh, your, your robot's wheels. You can just grab a uh, ruler, and the diameter is from uh, all the way from one side to the other side. If your wheels are really worn out, then they might not measure exact. Uh, but uh, I, I put it on the measure and I got two and three quarter inches. So that tells me 2.75 is my diameter, 2.75. And then my gear ratio is one to one. I just have the wheels connected directly to those motors. Uh, and then I have the default uh, gearing cartridge that came in those motors, which is 18 to one. So I'm good. So then I just click done right there. Now I have my drivetrain set up. Now all I need to do is download this to the robot. I've already set up the program to turn right for 90 and then turn left for 90 so that I can see you know, that it's working basically. So it's downloaded. Now I'm going to click run. Come on now. I didn't, I didn't quite click it, I guess. OK, it's got to calibrate the inertial sensor first, and then boom, so turn and turn. Now you can see I'm a little bit off. That could have something to do with slippage, a few other things. So you can uh, correct that in your programming to after it's completed the turn to just kind of align itself or, or you know make sure that it's pointing in the right direction as far as heading is concerned. All right, so that's with the inertial sensor, super easy. Uh, the problem is that not everybody has an inertial sensor, right? So what you can do when you set up that drivetrain is you can say no gyro. Okay, I think maybe I, I think it's not going to let me do that now. I think I have to delete it. So here I'll delete the drivetrain. Click add device. Drivetrain. And what do we say it was in? Left motor was in 20 and the right motor was in 11. And then I'll say no gyro. Okay, so you see there's a few more options here. You've got the wheel size, which is 2.75 inches. And that's important because when the robot drives forward for a distance, let's say I wanted it to drive 2.75 inches forward. Well, then the motor does some division and it just goes, well, my diameter 
or it doesn't math in this case. My diameter is 2.75 as far as the di diameter. So 2.75 times pi will give me, well, pi r squared, right? Well, anyway, it does the math, right? So it knows that uh, the circumference of the wheel based on the diameter, right? It's going to use the diameter to calculate the circumference of the wheel and know if the wheel turns you know, one whole revolution how far that is. And so then it could do the math and figure out exactly how far it's going to go. So if you put in that the wheel is bigger than it actually is, um, then it will go further. I think. <laughs> uh, anyway, it will not go the amount that you wanted it to go. I didn't work out the math before I started recording, and it's really hard to think on the fly sometimes when you're recording. Um, uh, but so I, it's 2.75. Now track width. You see this little question mark here. You're going to maybe forget. But think about tracks, like tracks on, of a train, how they're separated. So if I want to look at my robot, I need to figure out the track width. I want to find exactly where that wheel contacts the center. I can't get my ruler. Exactly the center of where that wheel contacts the ground and where that wheel contacts the ground. Okay. So I'm going to just do kind of a quick, you can always get it more accurate later, but I'm going to hold it down here. So I'm at the zero in the center. Wow, I'm almost at exactly nine inches. That's cool. Okay, so that's nine inches. So I'll go back and put in. No, once in a mil. Oh, it gives you the ch chance for uh, opportunity for uh, inches. So do nine inches. Now the wheelbase. Again, this little question mark in case you forget. The wheelbase. I don't. I mean, I always thought wheelbase was the diameter of the wheel, but. Uh, in this situation, they're wanting from axle to axle. From front axle to rear axle is the wheelbase. Now, my little robot here is a little bit tricky. I'm going to flip him over because I just got this little caster wheel on the back. Okay? And I don't have an axle running all the way through. So I'm going to figure my center because the thing is that when it moves, you know, that the center is changing a little bit. So I'm not quite sure where I should measure to, I'm going to guess probably to the middle of where it where it turns. So I'm going to, again, just kind of estimate here and see how, how well I go. Um, so that's about where it is to about there. I'm going to say seven. It's probably a little less than seven. Let's say six and three quarter. Okay, so 6.75 inches. Six point seven five inches, and oh, oh, that's cool. It did, did the conversion for me. That's funny. Six point seven five. Gear ratio is still one to one, and that's it. My cartridge is still the green default one that came in it, and then I'll click done right there. And now let me flip my robot back over on its. Back on its three little wheels. Let's make sure it, it, I have to download. Every time you make a change, make sure you click download. Okay, and I'll go back to it. There we go. I'll cl click run. There was no, there and did perfect, right? And there was no calibrating of the gyro or the inertial sensor because it's not plugged in. So that's why it did it so much faster. Let me run it again real quick. Come on. Oh, here we go. Click run. Yeah, it's pretty good. It actually almost looks more accurate than <laughs> than the inertial uh, sensor. So now let's just kind of mess with it real quick and see what would happen. Uh, what would happen if we chose the wrong size wheel? Let's say we said, oh, these are six inch wheels. That's Those are huge wheels, right? So then I'll download. Oh, I got to click done down here. Doot, 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 done. Okay, then download. 
and then that play button appears there we go let's check it out oh so it doesn't travel as far because it thinks it has bigger wheels because it thinks if i turn that wheel like a quarter turn it's going to go further so that's why you're going to get some weird stuff if you don't get accurate uh measurements in here so i'll put it back to 2.75 what happens if we said that those wheels were really close together? Like they were only three inches, they were only three inches apart. What would happen? And click done. And then click download. So now it's gonna think those wheels are not that far apart, they're little, right? So they don't actually have to travel as far for a 90. So my guess is it's gonna turn more. Let's find out if that's the case. Hmm, that's, r that's strange. We still have 2.75. We said three inches. Oh, the wheelbase. Something got. How did the wheelbase get messed up? 6.75. And then click done. Okay. Now let's run. Okay, I did the same thing. Oh, I didn't download. <laughs> it, you gotta keep the sequence, the order of operations that you do. Okay, that's w what I expected. Okay, because it thinks that these wheels are a lot closer together, so it's thinking it doesn't have to turn. That's weird. So I guess the moral of the story is it will not behave the way that you expect it to if you do not have the correct uh, information here in this uh, area, okay? So uh, the track width, what did we actually say the track width was? It was like almost exact was nine, right? Nine inches, 6.75 inches, all those, okay. Click done, download. Okay, <laughs> it's like you've messed with me too much, <laughs> but it, it looks like it's working now. Okay, it's going a little too far, but I think it's because there, there's like a swing to it, uh, but I, I do have it set for 90, so it's basically is doing what I want. Uh, you can do, of course, degrees and everything. Now, this is the block-based program, which a lot of you are like, hey, we don't use that. And that's that's fine. That's cool. It's This is the same setup if you're doing block-based or text-based. The, the setup uh, on the right is going to be the same. And most people aren't setting up their devices uh, by actually typing it out. You, you can do that. Uh, I don't recommend it. It's why not use the IDE if it has the ability to set it up for you. Uh, I agree that text-based is more flexible lets you do more stuff but if you're just getting started out and you're not uh, real real uh, comfortable programming psh, the blocks is awesome okay so that's it i wanted to show you how to get a drive uh, drivetrain set up and uh, whether you have a an inertial sensor gyro or not and uh, if you have questions leave them in the comments below if you want to see more about v5 and setting it up please let me know and i'll see you in the next one